now that we've moved into the world of inferential statistics, we now look at hypothesis testing. We're going to start with tests for proportions. We're going to be testing the plausibility of an assumption about a parameter. In this case, an assumption about some population proportion. We have some inclination or some past knowledge of what the proportion is for the population, and now we want to test it. Remember, a test is different than a confidence interval. Confidence interval is a way to estimate a value. A hypothesis test is a way to answer pretty much a yes or no question. That's kind of the most simplified way to, to think about it. Look at those two different types of questions in this table that we've seen before, but notice how the question's being asked. Now, the idea of a hypothesis test is similar to kind of like a court case where we have assumptions about you have a defendant on trial and we're going to end up um, uh, determining through the sample data, through the evidence, uh, if we have enough evidence to to convict or not convict, right? To say guilty or not guilty. In our world, we say um, to reject or not reject or to reject or fail to reject. And so the logic behind the hypothesis test is connected to kind of our court system, right? And when we observe some data right evidence that's unlikely right unlikely to occur right it's strong evidence against an assumed hypothesis we assume a proportion of a certain value then i observe some sample data that i wouldn't normally observe if that was true so now we're going to be ruling against that assumed hypothesis that the proportion equals something when we observe a value, uh, when an observer has a low probability, right, of occurring, we would reject, right, um, our hypothesis. So to conduct a hypothesis test, we have four steps similar to the confidence interval. The same four ideas. What's the parameter we're testing? Our hypothesis is an additional piece here. What is the name of the test? We do calculations of the test statistics and p-value in this case, but it's a calculation. And then we have an interpretation. We start with step one, which is writing your hypothesis. Once we know, are we doing a proportion or are we doing a mean, right? What's the parameter? And then we write a hypothesis. It takes a little practice. You may look at other videos to do it. We have a couple of examples here. But the null hypothesis is the first piece we need to write. And it's our assumption about the population, in this case, proportion, is equal to something. The alternative hypothesis, in this case, um, we say that the alternative is that that proportion is less than that value, it's greater than that value, or we can say in a two-sided test, say that it's not equal to something. Now, how do we know which one is which? Well, it goes back to the research, the data, it goes back to the question we're trying to actually answer, okay? So in this case here, um, in order to win an election, right, we need, a, we need to get more than 50% of the vote. Sample voters were polled to see if you're likely to win. Now you collect some data. The null hypothesis, null meaning like um, no, nothing's different, nothing's different from the value, right? Look up with that word N-U-L-L in the dictionary. Um, you get a, a sense of maybe the, helping you remember what it means. The, the null hypothesis case is that the proportion of people who vote for you is 50%. But you're trying to find out if you if there if the data supports um, that you could win the election. So the alternative to the null hypothesis is that the proportion of people is greater than 50%. So it is in the language. It goes back to what we're testing. So that would be a one-sided test. A two-sided test would be um, someone believes they shoot 85% uh, is a basketball situation. To prove it, he shoots 50 and makes 37 of them and gives them a sample data of 74 percent right the hypothesis used to test this well we're assuming that his proportion is 85 and to go against that right that he doesn't shoot 85 we would say not equal to 85 and that's what we have here not equal to 0.85 now we have to come up with this because this sets the stage for the type of test we're going to do and what data we enter into the artist stat or what data we need to uh, calculate based off of this hypothesis test. Now there are some keys to writing a null hypothesis. You can go ahead and read this here. The null hypothesis always has an equal sign. 
the alternative is going to be an inequality sign, less than or greater than or not equal. Now, the null hypothesis always has the parameter value, mu or p, doesn't have x bar or p hats, because the x bars and p hats, those are our sample data. That's the evidence we're going to use to compare it to what we think the parameter is. And so go ahead and read that and keep in mind as we move ahead in the rest of the videos to actually name the test and then do the calculations.